Today I'm gonna show you guys how to wire your Cummins swap. I'm gonna go over it real quick. First of all, I'm gonna show you guys the fuse box junction on the firewall, and then we're gonna work our way into the truck. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is go over the junction block. So this here, there's one bolt that holds this whole thing into your firewall, and this is the engine side. And we're just gonna go over all the different colors of wires on this thing to hopefully help you guys um, figure out where everything goes. And before you pull your engine out to do your come and swap, you wanna label everything. Now, the first one you wanna find is the key on ignition on wire. Now that would go to your distributor on your gas engine, but if you've already pulled the engine out and you're trying to figure it out, it'll be either a thick pink wire or a thick tan kind of um, beige kind of color wire. And that is your key on power. So mark that, okay? Now, the next little one, you'll, you'll see a little brown one. And again, this will go to your oil pressure sender on your Chevy engine before you pull it out. But if you've already pulled it out, look for this little brown wire. This is your oil pressure sender wire. Now, your temp sender wire will go to a sending unit, usually on the driver's side of the block on a Chevy engine. And it is always small and it is always green, okay? Next up, we've got our starter wire. Now on a Chevy, again, it's always gonna be a thick purple wire. That's for your starter. Okay, I don't know if you can see that color there, but it's, I've got it marked, it's a thick purple wire. That'll be your starter, okay? Now, the only other ones that you need to be worried about are these red ones and this tan one right here. It's kind of a pinkish tan. These two big red ones that go into your box here, these go straight to the battery power, so straight to positive terminal, as well as this tan one can go straight to positive um, on your battery. Now, if, if you wanna cut this wire off and forget about it, you totally can because this one just goes to your alternator and it's just a uh, sensor to tell your gauge cluster if your battery is dying. So you don't even need to worry about this one. It's just these two big red ones they go straight to your battery and that's what supplies power to your fuse box underneath the dash and and uh, yeah. Now your fuel sender for your fuel gauge will be a few different, it could be a few different colors. The wiring harness that I used on mine, it was a brown one like this. So the way to check that is once you get everything hooked up, once there's power going to the fuse box and it can be kind of the last thing you do is just ground out different wires from the wiring harness until you see movement on your fuel gauge and then you know that that one is the one um, for your fuel gauge. But these ones here are the main ones, your oil pressure, your ignition, your temperature sender, and your starter, and also your main power for everything. But hopefully that can help you guys out. Um, if you need to watch that again, give it a watch. And then obviously coming off of your fuse block, you've got your wires for your lights here, for your rears, you've got the light green is for your reverse lights. The yellow is for your left hand lights and brakes. Green, dark green is for right hand brakes and signal. And then brown here is for your markers. So hopefully that covers this here. And that's all you need. You don't need to be adding other stuff um, to make it run. The only thing you really need to add is wiring for the grid heater relay. And I will show you how to do that shortly here. So now that I've showed you guys the firewall junction, um, I'll show you guys the rest of everything. So that ignition wire that I was telling you about, the one that comes, that's key on power, you see that little fuse box there? That is what that is. So that pink, that pink wire, that, that tan or pink wire that is key on, goes to this fuse box and gives power to all those fuses. And then off that, you can run 12 volt fused accessories and I use that to send power to my fuel shutoff, my grid heater, and my reverse light. That's all that I'm using that for. Um, but yeah, those two red wires that I was telling you about that feed power to the fuse box, those just go straight to the battery down there. Same with your starter wire, it also goes for straight to the starter. The temperature sender, I plugged into the back of the block here, right down there. Now. When you're doing this, you wanna make sure that you use the same senders that were in the truck that you are swapping. So 
You might have to buy in a little NPT adapter or whatever, but these ones for the oil pressure and the temp sensor just bolted right in, no problem. And then I hooked up the wires just like they were on the truck before I pulled the motor out and it worked really, really well. Right here is my fuel shut off and that comes off that little fuse box I was telling you about. And then the oil pressure is down here and this truck actually is old enough that it has a factory mechanical oil pressure gauge. Um, so I just ran that. But if you don't have mechanical, you just buy the Chevy oil pressure sending unit, plug it into that hole which is down in here the factory location and then hook that brown wire up to it and that is all you do very easy for the alternator just like i say in every single video just buy the pa performance one wire alternator um, it bolts right in and it's just one positive wire straight to your positive terminal on your battery and it'll charge and it'll work at 14.1 volts no problem and i'm not even going to explain to you how to wire it the other way because you need to do it the right way or else you will have a problem. The next thing that I want to show you here is the grid heater. The grid heater is very easy to wire in, but I will show you how to do it. So your grid heater is right here, you know, underneath your intake. And it's there's two prongs here, and then it's grounded to the block on the other side. But put these into one wire here. And I just use welding, like uh, not super heavy duty, but welding cable. And I run that all the way down to here to this constant duty solenoid. So then there's a cable coming right off of the battery straight to the solenoid and then the other side of the solenoid goes to the grid heater. I always use the uh, case grounded solenoids. So that solenoid there grounds through the case. So when you screw it into the firewall, it's grounded out and then you just run one wire to it as you can see right there. So that's off of one of these fuses, goes into the cab to a button, and then comes back to this wire here. So when I push the button, closes the circuit and sends straight power from the battery straight to the grid heater, heats up the grid heater. That's the easiest way by far. So that pretty much covers everything. And if you do it how I said, you just run those two red wires straight to your battery. Your blower motor will work, everything will work inside the cab, you'll have no problems. The main thing with this is do not hack up your factory wiring harness. Your lights, everything will work. You can just plug and play and I really hope, I really hope that you did not hack your wiring harness before you got into this because you can actually wire one of these things easily in a day, no problem, if the wiring harness has not been hacked up. Also. If you're getting real fancy like I did here and you put your battery somewhere else besides the engine bay, you put it on the cab, make sure that you put a ground shutoff switch on like this. So when I turn this, that's pretty much as if I was connecting the negative battery cable. And so if you're ever working on anything like a starter or the alternator or anything where you might accidentally zap, you don't have to worry about it because you have a switch. So make sure you put one of those in um, which which turns off the ground to the, the battery. And then with the Speedo cable, if you're using a Getreg or you're doing a four-wheel drive swap with a 205 transfer case, you can plug the Speedo cable straight from your Chevy into the sender on the Getreg or the 205. The NV4500s and the 241 transfer cases have electrical senders and you can buy kits that are a box that uses that signal and converts it to a mechanical spinner deal and then sends it to a cable which goes to your factory speedometer. But there's lots of different ways to do that. A GPS speedo is another option. Thanks for watching and we will see you in the next video which is gonna be a complete overview of the truck and uh, I'm real excited about that. Like and subscribe, share this with your buddies. Have a good day, God bless, thank you.